All right, welcome. So today we're going to do some division with decimals, and we're going to use the ratio table as our helper to pull out partial quotients. Again, I am big, big on context. So I'm going to just give you a situation that I spent $14.70, and that the cost of each candy was $0.35. Cents. So I'm trying to figure out how many candies did I buy? So, so using the ratio table is good idea when we have measurement division because we know the size of the group we don't know the number of groups all right so just remember that for quantitative or measurement division the ratio table is a great way because we know the size of the group or the second or the size of the second factor all right so let's do some math here right so we so far we know that one candy costs zero and 35 cents or zero and thirty five hundreds right so now I'm going to work with my friendly numbers. Two is a friendly number, right? And if I use two, then that is zero and seventy hundreds. I don't want to go by one by ones all the way to 1470. So I'm going to use a friendly number maybe like 10, right? And I'm by the, by now I have already have taught students the structure of the multiplying by 10 of the digits shifting to the left when multiplying by 10. So we're going to pretend that that is Three, we're going to pretend students understand that, and that is three dollars and fifty cents, right? I'm not going to tell them that the decimal point moves because the decimal point, decimal point doesn't move. It's the digits that shift to the left when multiplying by ten. Well, that's pretty close, right? So maybe let's do what? Maybe let's double that, all right? So let's double it to maybe twenty um, candies. Twenty candies. If I double this. I have to double the cost as well, right? And that's where the ratio table is beautiful because you're talking about proportional reasoning. And if you double one side, you double the other, right? So right now I'm at $7. I wanna get as close to it as 14 as possible, right? So maybe a student says, well, maybe do 30 candies. All right, that's that's okay. And then we, we can add $7 and $3.50. and so that'll give us 10.50. Oh, that's pretty close. Let's try 10 more. So some students might say, oh, you know what? You could have just doubled it, Mr. Q. Well, that is true, right? So if I double the seven and the seven, that'll give us 14. Or there's other combinations, the 1050 plus the 350 would all will also give us $14. Well, that's pretty close, right? So now I can use 40 um, candies at cost of 35 cents, and that'll be $14. If I track that, now I have 70 cents to work with. Now I can go back to the ratio table and see something that I could help. Oh, you know what? I have two right here. So now I can use two. And I look where I'm going to put my two on top because I'm working with my ones now. So two candies at 35 cents, it's 70 cents, right? And now my remainder is zero. So how many candies was I able to buy? That is 42 candies. So just to review some of the things we did, remember it's quantitative division. Quantitative. Some people call it measuring out division. Measurement division. And this is the one where we don't know our number of candies, but we knew that each candy cost 35 cents and our total was 1470. When we have this type of unknown, which is the quarter of the division, the ratio table works very well, right? As you can see, I set up just friendly numbers here. And these help me pull out partial quotients when I do uh, a revised or an adapted version of the standard algorithm, right? So I hope you like this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, wait for more videos to come out. All right, take care, have a good one.